Well, with that, I'll call the meeting to order. My name is John Goldberg, and I am I will be the hearing officer today. I work at Public Works, and I'm assigned to the project management section. My job here as the hearing officer is to try and capture uh, what, what are both sides of the presentation, and then make a recommendation to the director. It's up to the uh, interim director to decide whether to accept the recommendations, uh, reject them, change them, modify them, whatever. So uh, ultimately, it will be her decision what to do. I just try and, and make that presentation to her. Um, when we have the hearing, we'll usually start by hearing from the department and then from the appellant. And then what we'll do after that is uh, open it up to any members of the public. Uh, it's generally three minutes for the speaking. Uh, Cerise, our clerk today, will uh, remind you when the three minutes is up. We'll let you finish up and give you a little leeway, but uh, you know we want to keep it as short and crisp as possible. Also, uh, for anyone that was on the hearing a couple of weeks ago when I was here, I was having a little bit of uh, internet problems, so I want to apologize uh, for that difficulty. I think that's been resolved and uh, we'll have a, a, a perfect hearing tonight. So with that, uh, let me start with the first item, which is public comment. If there's any items that the public wishes to comment upon that are not matters of on the agenda, uh, this would be the opportunity. Uh, hearing done, seeing none, uh, public comment will be closed. So we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, order number 206246, to consider the removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 24 Lobo Street. Staff has approved the removal and the public has protested. I ask that when you make your presentation, if you identify yourself and spell your name for the record, uh, I like to spell it right when I, when I write up my recommendations to the um, to the interim director. So, uh, Representative Department, uh, Mr. Hoffman. Hello, thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, my name is Dan Hoffman. I am a urban forestry inspector with the Bureau of Urban Forestry. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask to share my screen here. Um, so bear with me for one second. Here we go. All right, so can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can. All right, great. Oh, uh, this one, correct. So the 24 Lobo Street tree uh, is a staff approved tree. Um, so this tree here, has been planted by the Friends of the Urban Forest um, as part of their regular planting projects. And uh, at some point they got their wires crossed and planted this tree in between a gas line and a sewer line. So the urban forestry inspector for the area uh, noted the tree and decided that because the risk for future issues with this particular species being so close to the sewer line and the gas line, uh, she has approved it for removal and posted it uh, for a 30 day removal. Um, it should just be noted this species can grow uh, particularly large. They can get uh, 30 feet or more and have a pretty uh, pretty big trunk. So um, being that close to the utilities is uh, asking for trouble later on down the line. So it doesn't fit with our current planting restrictions. Right, did the property, did the property owner ask, apply for the permit or is this something the department recognized? So this was not a permit application. This is something the department recognized. Very good, okay. Uh, very good. Uh, are, is there any public comment or is the appellant wish to speak on this? Uh, 
Uh, I don't hear anything from the appellant. Is there uh, any members of the public that wish to speak on this? I don't see any hands. Oh, I, actually, there's one hand. Um, okay. From John Nolte. All right, Mr. Nolte. Uh, good evening. Um, my only issue here is that um, even though the uh, uh, both uh, both inspector uh, decided to uh, ask that this tree be removed because of the conflict with the utilities. Um, I still don't understand why uh, Ben Buff should be coming up with uh, money to pay for a tree to be located at another location per the planning, per the, the uh, ordinance as amended in January of 2022. So I would suggest that uh, you just can't take out trees and not replace trees per the ordinance. And I would respectfully ask that the hearing officer note that and anything going forward without a replacement of a, of a tree is a no-no. And so therefore that's my point on this item. And uh, uh, thank you. Very good, thank you for your comments, sir. Are there any other comments? All right, hearing none, we'll close this item and move on to the next item on the agenda. This is in regards to hearing order number 206-249 to consider the removal of one street tree without replacement adjacent to 491 Potrero Avenue. Staff has approved the removal and the public has protested. Mr. Hoffman. Okay, so this tree is a ficus tree. Um, and uh, the reason why it has been approved for removal is because there is a sidewalk repair project uh, directly adjacent to the tree um, here. So the, there's a ner fairly narrow sidewalk next to a pretty large tree. Um, the root pruning um, is required to complete the sidewalk repair. And um, the, the pruning that is required is within the critical root zone and would be uh, some pretty large roots. So the critical root zone is a important part of the tree that needs to be protected because it helps the tree with its regular uh, biological functions as well as structurally supports the tree, um, both the trunk and the canopy. Um, so any uh, disturbance to this area can can be detrimental to the tree and possibly uh, cause failure in the future. Um, you know, depending on how bad the work is. So here's a photograph of the damage to the sidewalk caused by the tree roots. Um, it's been patched to kind of make safe as much as possible but it, it's just too much uh, for this part of the sidewalk to, to go on like this. So our crews went out there to go in and do the work, hopefully to not go to the roots. And they, uh, they exposed them after um, destroying the concrete. So you can see here that there's a root here that's fairly large that, that has been cut in the past. Um, and there's another large root here on the other side. So these roots are on the, the opposite side of the tree's lean, and they are uh, helping the tree stay stable and, and upright. So cutting these roots or, sh or shaving them significantly um, could cause the tree to become structurally unsound and um, possibly fail. So uh, it's hard to tell in these pictures, but the, these are large, these are pretty large. I mean, think about like your whole forearm and then maybe even larger. So it, it, it's, it, it looks kind of small here, but the big roots. Um, and they are within the critical root zone, as you can see. I mean, this is a large diameter tree. So uh, we can't risk the failure. These trees have already been uh, known to fail and there is a, a removal order. So, I mean, we want to save the tree if possible, but the, the extent of the sidewalk damage, um, in our opinion, is just too much. 
Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, would the appellant like to uh, uh, speak? Seeing none, hearing none. Are there any members of the public that would list, like to speak on this matter? Uh, Mr. Nolte, it looks like you've raised your hand. Uh, good evening. I'm one of the uh, protestants for this tree. Uh, first, there's a couple of issues going on here that were not discussed by the uh, the uh, uh, inspector. Uh, one uh, issue is that the um, the bus stop was put in a couple of years ago and was not part of the plan to put it in. So that's a problem of putting in a bus stop that doesn't need to be there. Secondly, the tree has been there for a long time. Uh, um, and um, I think it should, should, should stay. I didn't hear anything except for its roots that it's not causing problems to the to the building or to uh, uh, you know just to the sidewalk. That's ordinary maintenance for uh, any tree of that statute. Um, uh, and I didn't hear about a replacement tree if it is taken out. Second, and I said again for the code, uh, you if you're going to take out a tree. Uh, you've got to replace it. So I didn't hear about anything about replacing this tree. Let, the next issue is that um, uh, if you walk a couple blocks either direction, you will see on on um, Potrero there are empty uh, plots. You now I'm taking out another empty, you know, trying to make more another empty plot on Potrero uh, with all these other empty plots that are on Potrero. So if you're not willing to uh, 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 and those have been empty for over five years. So I think though th th this should be uh, not taken out because you haven't even taken care of the other uh, plots that are empty on that street. Um, and that, that should be part of your consideration of looking at the Gopher Hall. Uh, it, what's going on on that uh, avenue? Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Nolte. Are there any other speakers? Seeing none, I'll close this item. We'll move on to the next item. Order number 206-251 to consider the removal of one street tree with replacement adjacent to 603 Anderson Street. Staff has denied the removal and the applicant has appealed. Mr. Hoffman. So this tree is a... Uh permit application for removal. And um, the reasons on the permit application are because the applicant feels the tree is too close to the house. They are having to deal with berries clogging the drains, street drains and damaging their cars. And uh, the branches are also interfering with their cable lines and their service drop, their power to their house. Uh, Miss o, Washington Hawthorne tree. Um, and this tree has been denied for removal because um, it is not a uh, high risk in its current condition. Um, it's actually in fair to good condition, pretty decent condition for a street tree. And uh, it's, a, it's a fairly small tree for, for the location. So it's not expected to get um, very much larger than it is now. And uh, we also feel that pruning on this tree can um, alleviate some of the applicant's concerns. So we've denied the removal for this tree. Uh, as you can see, it has some fairly sound branch attachments, um, decent bark, and uh, no, no defects, no obvious defects on the trunk or at the base. Um, so another reference photo for you guys there. Great, thank you. Is the appellant here to speak on this? I see a hand raised, uh, Jeff Squires. Yep, that's me, can you hear me okay? Sure can, yes sir. Yeah, so um, 
I agree with the inspector that it's healthy. And I think the problem is it's too healthy to be perfectly blunt. Um, the tree is extremely labor intensive to, um, to deal with from a perspective that you can see the sidewalk there is very narrow. Um, the tree drops its leaves and berries in the October, November, December timeframe. So this year with the, the rains that we had early in the season, um, I was sweeping the sidewalk two to three times a day. Um, I wasn't working at the time, so I was able to do that. But even then, um, as the inspector might know, the, the leaves on these, when they start to decompose and fall off, once they get any water on them, they emit a, a slime from them, a basically like a, like a slimy sap um, that even after the sidewalk is swept is still very slick. So there were, I, I received four complaints that just this year from people who slipped um, while walking. And I, even times when I'd go out there and sweep the sidewalk, you could see skid marks from shoes in the leaves. Um, so that's one of the huge concerns. On the other side of that fence, that's my property. And I have drains that are there to, to provide drainage. The house is slightly lower than the sidewalk. Um, and so that's another major concern. During those months, um, I have to, if I can't be there, I have to pay for somebody to come and make sure the drains um, remain cleared because they clog up uh, easily within a day. Um, and so any rains around that time would end up flooding the house um, and potentially cause a problem um, to my neighbor uh, there that is the, the greenhouse. So those are my big concerns. I just wanna make sure I state clearly that um, I'm doing my best to try and um, alleviate any possible um, injury and hazard risks to the neighborhood and to my neighbors. Um, so that if, uh, God forbid, anything were to happen, the, the onus falls on the city. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Squires. Are there other speakers on this item? I see two participants have raised their hand. Yes, we have Mary, El Mary Ellen Ryan. Go ahead, you should be able to speak. Yeah, my name's Dan Gomez. I actually live in the house across the street. I'm just using Mary Ellen's uh, computer. Okay, sir, can you state your name and spell it just so I, I Dan, get it correct? Daniel Gomez, D-A-N-I-E-L Gomez, G-O-M-E-Z. Okay, and you're across the street, sir? Yes, yeah, 614 Anderson. That's okay, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just want to reiterate that this tree is, it's a real nuisance. Like, like Jeff was saying, when, when this drops berries, it drops them all over the sidewalk onto the cars, which kind of almost will stain the paint if they're on there long enough. And then when it blossoms, these little flowers, these things blow all over the place. I mean, they're on my porch, my stairs, they get into my garage, they even get into my car. And it's just the street cleaners come by and two seconds later, these leaves are just floating on this, oh, everywhere. So I just wanna say that it's just a nuisance really. And it, if you look at any tree on the block, this is the only tree that dumps any kind of material that buries the leaves, and all that. And it's just, you know, it's not like he wants to take it out and concrete it. He, he does want to put in uh, uh, another tree that's more manageable, that doesn't cause any uh, problems. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there other speakers? Yes, <clears throat> we have Dan Rosen. You should be able to speak. Hello. Yes, Mr. Yes. Rosen. Uh, Dan Rosen, D-A-N-R-O-S-E-N. -E Thank you. And I'm at 608. I'm actually more directly across than Dan Gomez. Um, I think Dan used the word that I would describe this street. It's a nuisance. Um, the red berries do go everywhere. Uh, on the cars, in the drains, 
And the other thing is when it blooms the, somewhere in the, in the cycle, it emits an obnoxious odor that's so strong that you can't really open the windows of your house. Um, you know, it, to be honest, it just stinks. <laughs> um, and then, as uh, my other neighbor Dan mentioned, when the little white petals drop from the tree, they blow everywhere. And even though, as Jeff says, he tries to sweep them and keep the things clean, um, they go everywhere. They're in the house, they're upstairs, they're in the garage, they're in the car. Um, and when the street sweeper comes, sometimes they get swept up. Other times he just uh, propels them all over the neighborhood. Um, so I, I guess we were looking for a more neighbor friendly tree, <laughs> if we can say that. Um, and I think Jeff is willing to, um, you know, replace this one with, um, one that, uh, doesn't just create this net nuisance in this mess. Um, cause it really is kind of an irritation. I, I actually thought it had died this year, you know, with the drought before it rained. And I hate to say I was thankful that it did, but then after the rain, it reblossomed again. So anyway, we'd like, we'd like a, a different tree. That's all. Th this one's really not very neighbor friendly. That's it. Thanks. Great. Thank you, sir. Are there other speakers? See, Mr. Nolte's got his hand up. Uh, good evening. Uh, if the hearing officer decides that this uh, tree should be removed, um, I would like to see a, 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 a medium size uh, a tree statute um, and also that the uh, um, make sure there's an agreement between the property owners and, and, and also since you have three of the neighbors here, make sure that there is a, a mechanism to water the new tree um, so that it can grow for three years and there's a, there is a, a willingness with neighbors to water the tree for three years for its maturity. Um, otherwise, um, I would deny this uh, um, application uh, or request to uh, remove the tree if they cannot agree upon watering and taking care of the tree, for, a new tree for three years. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Nolte. Okay. I think that is, are there any new speakers? No, there are none. No, okay. no, uh, no speakers. Very good, uh, Mr. Squires. I think you only get one if you're if you're if your hands up. You only really get one bite at the apple uh, to speak. So, if you have something real quick, I'll, I'll allow. But generally, it's one one bite at the apple. I have um, put our urban forestry inbox address in the chat so that if there's further testimony, anyone can email that in. Uh, I'll write it in there again on the um, Great, and the I chat. see you just commented that he agrees to water a new tree if that's the case. So uh, if there's no other new speakers, then we'll close this item. Um, and we'll move on to, um, Order number 206-253 to consider the removal of five street trees with replace with replacement adjacent to 2350 Green Street. Staff has approved the removal and the public has protested. So on this matter here, I just want to uh, note that I am aware uh, that there's been representations of an agreement that the trees would not be removed. And um, this hearing is not to adjudicate that, that those discussions took place in a different forum. This hearing is just to discuss um, the trees themselves and whether or not uh, based on the department's representations and public comments about the trees, whether, uh, they would be allowed to be removed if um, the other representations and discussions that took place outside this hearing uh, allow that, if that makes sense. So we're here to discuss whether the trees 
meet the criteria for removal uh, and that that is kind of it. The other things will be need to be discussed in other forms and resolved in other forms. All right. So Mr. Hoffman, if you'd like to start. Yeah, and I also just want to make a correction to the slide here. It does say without, but that is that's incorrect. So these trees will be replaced um, if approved for removal. So and that we'll get to that. So um, anyway, these these are five trees. They're five ficus trees. They're all the same species. And I just want to reiterate again that the city has had a legacy of issues with this species of tree. And so much so that the city passed an order to remove these trees if they meet specific conditions. Um, so, it, it you know, we, we want to take each tree as an individual. There's no one size fits all approach. Um, you know, there could be perfectly sound and structurally fine ficus trees, but others definitely have the signs that they are they're going to fail. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll present you guys the trees. So all of these trees meet the, the criteria for the ficus removal order. Um, the condition of all of these trees is very poor. With the, maybe the exception of one or two, you could maybe kick up to a poor condition, but these trees are, are not in fair condition. They are in poor condition from the perspective of the Bureau and of the certified arborists who have evaluated these trees. So you can see uh, in this first tree photograph, number one, um, this tree has a, a large canker that spans almost, it spans the entirety of the trunk. And um, none of that wood is alive and none of the, the that portion of the tree is contributing to uh, anything that's above it. Um, and you can also see that it has a fungal infection, which is deteriorating the wood. And over time, it just will become more and more uh, hazardous and risky. So these trees were applied for removal because one of the other trees failed during the, one of the recent storms. So they said, uh, we don't want this to happen to the other trees. So tree one, pretty bad, probably the worst out of all of them. Um, really poor branch structure, uh, all acute angles and uh, included bark. So um, high failure uh, likelihood. So tree number two has a little bit less outward signs of issues. Um, we can see there is a canker that is significant on one portion of the trunk. Um, there are some signs that the tree has grown around that. So, you know, the, the extent of that internal um, dead wood and decay is, is unknown. We, we can't really know how, how much is in there. But, but we do know that this tree is in very similar condition to the tree that failed uh, right next to it. So um, again, it also has acute branch attachments and um, just it's been topped over, over its whole life. So, you know, it looks vibrant, but the structure itself is, is poor. So tree number three is, is similar to tree number two. Uh, it also exhibits the canker at the base. And we can see that there's also a canker that is in the lower portion of the canopy. Um, this is telling me that this uh, this canker probably actually extends all the way through this tree. And, and it looks probably similar to tree number one um, with the entire portion of it, you know, just dead. And also the tree number four. So tree number three looks less bad, but you know, if we give it time, it's probably gonna look like four. Um, it doesn't fall over before then. But it should be noted that every single one of these trees has been planted with a root guard or was planted um, inside its original planter. It's, it's kind of hard to say, we didn't ex excavate very far, far down, but there's like a plastic sheathing that is um, inside the planter of 
each and every one of these trees. And it's my opinion that that's what's contributed to this, these cankers and the likely fungal infection, which may have caused it, it's hard to say. But the fungal infection aside, all of these trees also have the acute angles, the really poor branch attachments. So, you know, all of these trees have to be approved for removal from the Bureau's perspective. And, you know, regardless of any other agreements that the school had with anybody, we believe these trees are risky and there's no reason why we would deny their removal. And again, the, the, the replacement trees will be this, the same stature and size um, at maturity. So the, the tree can be a young species that's planted per our standards, a 24 inch box species, but at maturity, it will have to be the large uh, stature tree. So there you have it. Okay, so, uh, so if it's approved, the minimum replacement would be a 24 inch box? Yes, for sure. Yeah, nothing smaller uh, could be replaced. Okay, all right. Very good. Uh, would the appellant like to speak? Is there an appellant that wishes to speak on this matter? I see two hands raised. Um, the San Francisco Girls School is Genevieve Anderson and she is um, gathering the community. I'm not sure who the SF, uh, SVDP administration is. Um, okay. Let me see. I'm gonna go to the SV. They may, they may be the school. Yeah, the SVDP administration first. You should be able to speak. So uh, well, let's start with um, no. the appellant, and then we'll then we'll we'll go to. Um, well, let, well, let's go. Let's go with let's go this the, the administration first. The the, the the applicant for the removal. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can. Can you state your name and spell it, please? Yes, it's Marguerite Peeney, M-A-R-G-U-E-R-I-T-E, -E, last name Peeney, P-I-N-I. I am the principal at the school and representing the parish and school. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead. Um, so we had, as uh, Mr. Hoffman said, a tree did fall in January of 2021, and we removed it immediately. What was brought to our um, attention by the arborist that disposed of the tree for us was concern, root rot concern with the tree. And so when we started examining the other trees, we noticed some similar markings as Mr. Hoffman identified when he presented. And so we petitioned or we put in a permit to see what to someone to evaluate the trees, the city. And um, they came back with all five in poor condition. We have looked at all five again. And um, after your report, it looks like they are all in poor condition. We had just with our eyeballs looked at possibly salvaging uh, three of the five or two of the five, depending on how you look at it. But um, we do want to work with our neighbors and we do want to try and do what's best for the city and for the safety of the neighborhood, not just students, but for the entire neighborhood. So we're willing to definitely work with people to see how we can manage these trees safely and do what the re city requires to do and work with the city in replacing the trees. Um, I did send in a PowerPoint to the city and in it, it shows the master plan, which has no um, plans to remove trees. In fact, trees are drawn on the renderings exactly where they're placed currently. So I just want everyone to understand that there was is no plan in the master plan to remove these trees. There's always been trees in the master plan. And that's it, thank you. Very good, thank you, ma'am. Um, so uh, appellant, if the appellant would like to speak. Uh, SF Girls School? Yes, we have Genevieve Anderson. Um, go ahead. You should be able to speak now, Ms. Anderson. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, 
thank Ms. you. Anderson, may I ask before you start, are you representing uh, yourself, the girls school or? or no, I, I apologize myself. I tried to change my Zoom name, um, but I was already in the meeting and so could not figure out a way to do that. So it's Genevieve Anderson. No, that's fine. I just want to clarify, make sure I get it right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much also for clarifying that there is a legal agreement in place. Uh, it was Ms. Anderson, founded- let me, let me- let me stop you. I don't want to. I, I know there's representations that there's an agreement, but I can't speak whether there is or not. So I, I just want to make that clear for the record. I, okay. I, don't, I okay. don't know that there is. That, that's fine, Mr. Goldberg. I, I know that there is. So okay, I, share, I, I shared it with your um, supervisor, Carla Short, and she shared it with the city attorney's office. Um, and not only is there a legal agreement between St. Vincent de Paul and the neighborhood to preserve these trees, but the neighborhood in fact paid uh, in part for those trees, but unfortunately the church has been maintaining them. Um, I do wanna just very quickly address that the church failed to consult the entire neighborhood on the newest master plan for its building projects. And uh, we only received notification of a commission hearing uh, to pass on this plan for new projects. It is true that the plans had the trees in place. Um, and I made sure by calling uh, the Department of City Planning and the architects that there was no plan to remove these trees. On that basis, I did not object at the commission hearing to the church's plans. I'm sure that many of my neighbors were equally uh, comforted, if you will, and, and gave approval to the church's newest plans. But these trees were indeed planted many years ago in part paid by us in order to block um, the parking lot from view. Uh, the parking lot used to be the place of a convent that was demolished by the church. So this legal agreement cannot be overturned now by any determination of uh, DPW or Dan Hoffman. Nonetheless, I do want to maintain, I think a lot of my neighbors feel exactly the way I do. They, these trees have been very poorly cared for by the church. Despite being topped for most of their lives, they managed to survive and they continue in fact to thrive. It is absolutely critical that the trees remain in place because without these trees, the ambiance of the community would suffer greatly. There was a tremendous windstorm that broke many trees around the city, in fact, all over the Bay Area. And it's not surprising that one of these ficus trees was damaged in that process. That should not condemn all five of these trees, however. And uh, we have seen these trees really hang in there. I think they have many, many years left in them to survive. And in any case, they cannot be removed because it would be in violation. 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds remaining. My only last thing that I would like to say is that I'm a little disconcerted by some of Mr. Hoffman's logic on preserving some trees. In other words, you know, if we shave the roots of a beautiful ficus, it may hurt the roots, which may weaken the tree. So let's just cut the whole tree down. I, I do feel that DPW um, and urban forestry, they're not fulfilling their mission of saving trees that can be saved. And these are a really good example of trees that can thrive despite mistreatment and have years left. Very good, thank you, Ms. Anderson. I appreciate it. Uh, are there other speakers on this matter? I see one hand up. We have Mr. Nolte. Go ahead, Mr. Nolte. Uh, good evening. Uh, I was curious about this when I saw this. these trees uh, to be uh, removed on, on the calendar for, uh, um, uh, for this hearing and also prior. Um, and um, I have a petition online with, with over 6,000 uh, signatures to save ficus trees. Um, and I think even though with the canker, you know, I didn't hear anything from from the from the from the urban forester about how they could deal with the canker uh, issue with these trees. Um, all I heard was, you know, the standing order, which um, um, 
number of uh, neighborhoods uh, um, has seen in the last two years their ficus trees being removed, but we've also learned from the um, not taking all the ficus trees that they were they were, were requested by Buff to, to be removed were removed. Uh, the numbers got smaller and smaller, and also they they've been creatively uh, able to. Um, prune back the trees so that the, 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 they, they still have life in them. And, um, and so, so tr trimming of the trees would be more appropriate in this, in this case, um, and to leave some um, um, renderings for the neighborhood and also some shade for the neighborhood and also to um, uh, 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 help with uh, uh, dealing with the, um, People don't know that there's a parking lot there. That's what the trees are, I guess, hiding. So there is, uh, there has been a movement uh, all across the city about dealing with ficus trees, and so um, a number of these uh, issues have been brought up, and 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 Buff has been responsive with uh, with the community to uh, limit to the amount of trees that they remove, and that order um, is not really. Uh, in play here because of uh, some issues that have been agreed upon uh, with other neighborhoods about FICA streets. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Nolte. Are there other speakers? I see a hand up. Yes, no? there is Mr. Michael Nolte. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Nolte. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, Michael Nolte. And you know, um, I've been to several meetings, actually half full meetings, more than actually half full meetings. And uh, every time uh, the Bureau of Urban Forestry uh, quotes uh, some mandate about trees, um, it's a mandate that they would like to use, but it doesn't specifically always refer to, uh, come down to what the specifics about the Pacific tree is, uh, is going through. And uh, I'm glad to hear that there's always going to be questions about how a mandate seems to want to kill trees but not preserve trees. Um, we happen to live in the city of San Francisco. We have very few trees uh, to begin with uh, that we, uh, we need to be growing our canopy. And when um, we have uh, forces uh, uh, trying to remove ongoing trees all the time, instead of finding uh, ways to mitigate, and I repeat the word mitigate, uh, and uh, keep trees uh, as much as possible. This mandate should be uh, stricken um, when possible, and uh, we should be looking at the reality of, of our um, climate and trying to preserve trees and mitigate the ability to keep trees in San Francisco. You know, I'm a native San Franciscan, and I don't I don't really appreciate hearing how there's a city department um, for trees when there really should be a mandate of this city department to keep trees uh, and try to preserve trees. So there's really something wrong with how the city employees have, and I am a former city employee. So you know, I don't appreciate how city employees that uh, my tax dollars pay for trying to uh, cause more harm to our neighborhoods and our environment. So um, I think you know, city employees need to understand that, that they work for us, the community, and not just some uh, bureaucracy that seems to come up um, when uh, it's more easier for them not to do their job. So um, I'm sorry that I have to say in these terms, but I think that um, if some of the neighbors are actually on this call or have uh, been um, fighting for these trees, 30 seconds. I really support um, the idea of keeping trees, as many trees in San Francisco as possible. And I'm glad that the community has come to rally against these, uh, you know, for these beautiful trees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nolte. Are there other speakers? I don't see any other hands at this time. I don't see any. All right. 
There's no other speakers. We'll, we'll... Um, before you close this item, though, Mr. Uh, Goldberg, there was someone who asked if Mr. Hoffman had any images to share of what the replacement species, a mature replacement species tree would look like, or um, what could you say to them about that? So the replacement species hasn't been chosen yet because, excuse me, uh, because we want to work with the community and uh, the school to choose the best species for the location. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Hoffman, you're you're muted. You're you muted. Today. Yes. There you Sorry. go. Sorry, we, we haven't spoke. We haven't chosen a specific species yet. Um, we want to choose the best species for the location. Um, of course, the large trees are going to, you know, do more screening. They're going to you know, they're going to be larger. So, you know, large trees have more benefits to some people. And, you know, we just want to get, get it right. Um, you know, trees are living things. They die. Um, you know, eventually they're going to have to be replaced. These are risky trees. But anyway, I'm, I don't want to get up too far off. But yeah, the species hasn't been selected yet, but it will be large. Okay. All right, very, very good. So, so again, uh, the recommendation will be to the, to the acting director or the interim director, but but has but the recommendation just is whether the from the hearing it it, it, it would allow or disallow um, removal of the trees. The, the other issue about 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 the representations and an agreement. Are, are will be decided in a different forum um, than this one here. So, all right, with that, we'll close this hearing. We'll move on to the last item on the agenda. Uh, hearing order 206-255 to consider the removal of one street tree and one significant tree with replacement of one tree adjacent to 4822 19th Street. Staff has approved the removal and the public has protested. Hoffman. All right, so this is a um, construction related application. Um, it's currently a vacant lot and there is a permit to construct the new home. The blue stars indicate the location of the trees. Um, and you can see in this photograph there's, or this uh, plan here, this uh, dotted line is the property line and uh, the sidewalk is here. So in their plans, this tree that is within the sidewalk is within the curb cut, uh, the proposed curb cut. And they also have a uh, significant tree, which is on the property side that is located within the footprint of the proposed building. Um, they have also a proposal to plant a new tree uh, in this location. So again, here you can see this is their plan, uh, the entrance to their proposed garage with the tree here and the building with the existing tree here. So these trees are May 10s. They are uh, here, this tree. And here, this tree, the sidewalk tree has been approved for removal due to the location of the proposed driveway. And the property significant tree is approved for removal within the footprint of the new building. Um, so the, this tree will be replaced here, um, but this tree is not replaceable because uh, it's significant on property side. So we will collect an in lieu fee for the loss of the tree. The sign um, will be moved. So we don't have to really worry about that here. And there is space from this um, pole to fit a new tree. So uh, the forester went out there and measured everything. 
to make sure that this this tree actually adheres to our planning restrictions. So um, the condition of the trees, uh, this is the sidewalk tree. Uh, you can see it has had some previous root pruning and um, the forester believes that's likely what's causing the decline in the tree's health. Um, it, it looks from the photograph, I haven't seen the tree in, in person, this particular tree, but it does look from the photograph that this is likely rotted. So you can assume that there may also be rot inside the tree um, and, and fungal infections that you know can cause health issues. Um, the tree's in a fair condition, has a you know decent canopy, uh, but there is dieback, uh, thinning branches um, and br dead branches in the lower canopy. So the significant tree, which is on the property side, um, as you can see here, has two trunks, its uh, co-dominant stems, and the uh, I haven't seen the tree, but he says low. So, you know, the, the tree probably uh, turns into two trunks, maybe like three to four feet off of the ground. So these are pretty long branches for where the, the trunk splits. Um, the health of the tree is fair to good, uh, but because it's located within the footprint, they uh, the forester decided that this tree should be approved for removal. So uh, I the Bureau agrees we should approve this tree so that they could build their house. So the project will pay one tree in Luffy for the non-replacement and then they'll replant uh, in the other location. And that's the end of the presentation. So Mr. Hoffman, could you just uh, explain what the significant, significant tree is uh, that's on the private property? Yeah, so the city has passed protections for uh, street trees and significant trees. Uh, significant trees are any tree that's within 10 feet of the public right of way. Um, so this tree is almost within the public right of way. It, it is within 10 feet. And because of that, they have to apply for a removal permit to be able to remove it. Uh, if it was not 10 feet or more than 10 feet from the, the right of way, then the property owner wouldn't need a removal permit to remove the tree and they can just do whatever they like with it. Um, but because this tree is significant within 10 feet, it's protected under Article 16. Okay. It does it have to be a certain size or anything or just just at 10 feet is the is the criteria. Yeah, they, it has to actually be a tree. It has to be um yeah, there's a size class, a certain spread and a certain height. So okay. And then for the recommendation for the replacement tree, is it uh, size, what, what same species or what's, how's that going to so be? This, this species is no longer approved for being planted in the street because it's notorious for having root uh, issues. The, the roots of this particular species of tree can be very vigorous and can actually grow into uh, other tree basins. Um, so they, they give us a lot of issues with sidewalk damage. So we, we no longer prove this species. Um, May 10 is like a medium sized tree and um, any other medium sized tree would, would do fine here. Uh, okay. I don't recommend a large tree because the sidewalk is kind of narrow. Okay, so it, but the, the, the planning would be what? An, an, again, a 24 inch box or? Yeah, 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 yeah. A construction related 24 inch box is the standard that has to be planted. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Is the appellant uh, present or, and would like to speak? We have okay. uh, Roy Leggett. Go okay. ahead, Mr. Leggett. Mr. Leggett. Uh, hi, um, I'm uh, here to represent the applicant, not the appellant. I think that we're okay. supposed to go first. Uh, so right. sorry if I'm out of order. No, that's but, okay. I, I, it's, it's me. It's not you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I've done enough of these hearings to kind of know the sequence. But um, <clears throat> so I wrote an arborist report for the two, um, well, the street tree removal, not for the tree, which is the significant tree. Um, I, that was not requested of me. 
uh, way back when I wrote the report, which was, um, let's see, the date on that was uh, September of 2021. So uh, six months ago. And uh, I think that at that point, the architect was, um, was just getting, getting the site work figured out. So um, we didn't, uh, in our report, we didn't have a, a clear understanding as to where the building was gonna be or what was going on. But uh, the lot is a relatively small parcel. And um, so I'm not surprised that this tree, uh, the, the significant tree needs to be removed in order to place a building on the property. Um, the maiden tree that uh, Mr. Keller just discussed uh, I looked pretty closely at that, and um, there is extensive decay in the root collar. Uh, there also are three stems instead of one that are really closely connected to each other with uh, kind of with bark inclusions and wrapped around each other. I'm very concerned about that tree splitting apart, failing due to the decay from beneath and the bark inclusions from above. Uh, I think that those unions are really uh, severely compromised from both directions. Um, my report concluded because of that, that uh, with the crown die back in the tree, that it was at least poor and maybe even getting into very poor condition because of the structural problems. But um, anyway, I, I'm glad to hear that um, the developers are going to be planting another tree near to that utility pole site and uh, moving the sign. I think that's fantastic. Um, and uh, putting that new tree in will maintain that green canopy along this narrow street and really continue to benefit the neighborhood. So uh, I think that's um, the right thing to do and I'm glad it's happening. So I hope that you approve the removal of both of these trees out of necessity. And uh, ultimately we're gonna see a benefit with the new tree going in, which is a healthy and structurally sound tree. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Did you submit your arborist report to the department? Um, well, the way it works is when somebody hires me to look at you a tree and write record. a report, I give them the report. Whether they give it to you or not, I don't honestly know, because uh, they're the applicant. Cool. Um, so anyway, they're working with planning and other permit issues. So I don't know if they sent that report to you or not, but I could certainly send it by email to uh, Mr. Keller. That might be a good way to go. And then he can forward it on to everybody. Um, because I'm sure that they would like to have that on the record. Yeah, the, uh, if you submit it to Urban, uh, it's in the chat room. Uh, Charisse put the, the, and then it can be forwarded and be included as part of the record. Okay, I'll, I'll send that over this evening. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Are there other speakers? We have uh, Davey Kapler. Go ahead, you should be able to speak. Hi, it's actually, it's shortened. My name is Davida Kapler and I'm a neighbor. Um, my house, uh, my backyard is adjacent to this empty lot. Um, and I'm familiar with these trees that my ex neighbor who um, died some years ago put in. She put five street trees in. And um, yes, they are neglected. All of them are neglected. And um, the May 10, that's the street tree is in, it's in pretty poor condition. It has um, circling roots and um, it has a lot of um, dead wood in it and from lack of care. Um, but it's, it's really not that bad considering many other street trees that are around here. Uh, I don't, I was going to really protest the removal of that not the significant tree because that tree is quite a mess. Um, because uh, this, this lot is up for sale with the plans and that's not to say that those plans will ever come to fruition. But um, I, don't, I don't think that uh, this tree is, is um, probably worth it <laughs> to protest it. If a new tree goes in, it would be nice if someone took care of it. Uh, the new owners, hopefully. But my main concern is the cherry tree that is north of the street tree, the maintenance that's um, due to be removed, which is completely dead. 
and nobody has paid any attention to removing that. And the people who own the property now don't come out and do anything to the tree wells, clean the tree wells, or take any of the dead branches off, which fall off into the street or onto people during the windy time of day. So I would think it would be a good idea if possible for um, the DPW to suggest if they're going to remove two living trees to remove the dead one as well. And um, that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Capo. I, I appreciate your comments. However, the dead trees, unfortunately, are not part of this hearing. So um, I, I would suggest that that perhaps you send a note to um, to Buff Bureau of Urban Forestry, letting them know of your concerns and of the trees. And um, you know, the city, going back a, a number of years, took responsibility for street trees. So that is something that could certainly be um, argued and articulated, but it, yeah, and, and just to, to jump in real quick, Mr. Goldberg, respectfully, um, we are aware of the dead cherry tree, and Steve was telling me about the other trees around, but these particular trees are actually a, applied for removal by the property owner. So the Department of Public Works would not be doing any work to remove these trees, okay. just to clarify. And uh, you can definitely send Steve or send me or the email uh, in the chat, um, you're, con you're concerned about the dead tree and we'll, we'll get back to you about it and you know, definitely see what we can do in some timelines we'll talk about. Later. Great, so, well, so, so Ms. Thank you. Ms. Kapler, at least you got some information. Sounds like they're being, uh, permits been, you know, submitted for their removal. So uh, may maybe, maybe that'll happen. Well, I'm I'm glad that they that they requested a permit this time because they actually removed an incredible uh, sequoia and um, a redwood tree, and they removed a beautiful ma magnolia tree without asking anybody's permission. <laughs> anyway, thank you for hearing me out. No, thank you. Uh, are there other speakers on this item? Seeing none, hearing none. Oh, Mr. Nolte, you got your hand in there at the end. John Nolte? Yes, hi. Um, uh, my concern is that um, uh, hearing the uh, prior uh, property owner nearby saying that the lot is for sale and, 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 and with the plans and everything. So that sounds like that, and this is in sort of in transition. Uh, this property so therefore you know there's really no owner to really speak because they're selling the permits and so forth to another th a third party um, uh, for a buyer so um, I would insist then that um, the uh, the monies collected uh, go within the, within the neighborhood or, or maybe even the significant trees since I was one of the persons involved with legislation for a significant trees uh, to be added to, to the uh, 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 forestry code. So the problem I have here is that um, since the property is sort of in transition that I, I think it is strong language to, if a permit is, is approved that the, um, you know, they have to follow and, and get guarantees uh, that they will water the new tree to uh, the uh, the street tree when it's removed, uh, water works for three years. Um, otherwise, it, it, as as stated before uh, by the neighbor, uh, they're not taking care of the current trees are are on uh, adjacent to the property. So that that's, kind of shows you where the property owner currently stands with dealing with their trees. So I think that um, that's um, um, I would I would like to see make sure that is uh, added to uh, the ruling. Um, uh, if you decide to move with the trees. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Nolte. Are there other speakers? Yes, we have, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Ciaran, C-I-A-R-A-N. Yeah, hi. 
Yes. Sir, would you uh, state your name and spell it, please? Yeah, hi, my name is Kieran Hardy. And I'm the property owner. H-A-R-D-Y is the last name, sir? Yes. Okay. And I wanted to, first of all, rebuke any accusations that I removed any trees without any permit. I when I bought this Mr. piece Hardy, of land. Mr. Hardy, just, just address, we're not going to go back and forth here. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to say when I bought this piece of property, it is as it is right now. Okay. Um, as far as the sale of this property, if I put the piece of property on the market, that's fine. But my intention fully is to build this property, build a house, the same as that's what I do for a living. <clears throat> so we need to, you know, the Roy looked at the tree and we, dis, we figured that this was the best location for the garage going by the condition of that tree. Okay. And that's how we designated where the garage would be and the structure. That's really all I have to say about it, other than we're just trying to build a single family home. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other speakers? Cerise, I see none. Um, they lowered their hands. I don't see any other hands. Okay. Okay, well, uh, that's the final item. Uh, I will not prepare any recommendations until you know, towards the end of the week so that if people have other things they want to send, if they get them in by say, Monday, they get them in by, let's say, Wednesday at noon, uh, I'll include written comments from any of the speakers today. You know, Mr. Liggett's going to send something in and if there's other ones. Um, with that, I want to just thank uh, Cerise and Mr. Hoffman for their help today. And I want to thank all the members of the public that, that came to present their point of view and opinions. I think that's important for city government to hear from that. And with that, uh, we'll close the hearing. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. So I think, Cerise, we need to, to uh, stop the recording. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot about that. I just I just happened to see it up on Twitter.